Hi, welcome to Jade Kind Gaming. My name is Adam, and it's that time again. Time for a Reaper Bones unboxing. So today we have the core set, and there will be more videos following. Um, but uh, again, this is Kickstarter rewards that they've put out, and of course all these minis will be coming to normal retail eventually. Uh, however, this time with Bones 5, they have just announced that, uh, at least with some of the sets, they will be doing another order um, through the pledge manager. You can, I mean, it's, uh, I think, like 20% added for being a late pledge, but if you're interested in any of these sets as they are here, you can still get a great deal on it if you act quick. Uh, I think they said that, I forget if it was a week or a month, but you don't have long. <laughs> Uh, but it should be right around the time I'm uploading these videos. Uh, so starting with the core set, Reaper Bones. <laughs> it says Reaper Bones 4 core set. This is Reaper Bones 5 core set. Contains over 150 highly detailed plastic bones and bones box miniatures. Fun, fun. Um, so we'll get started here. And I will say, one of the exciting things for me is I finally started painting my minis. And I think on the main page of my Kickstarter, sorry, on the main page of my YouTube channel, like up in the, the recommended, like here are my links or whatever, there's a link to my Instagram, and whenever I paint minis, I put them up there. So we'll get started. The first thing is Sophie's Lucky Dice. That's just a set of dice. They did dice, so cool. Oh boy, it looks like these are all individually wrapped. This will be fun. Um, what do we got here? Oh, this is our little pizza guy. You see our little dragon with the hat and the pizza? So it's our actual pizza dragon, like from the cover of the box. We have some tabaxi here. This one's got a little coin purse. Knife. So this one has like a staff, it would be a wizard tabaxi. We have a fighter tabaxi with a eggs. The shield and sword and helmet. We have a ranger tabaxi. Obviously they're like cat folk or whatever per reaper, but for me, tabaxi. And this one is in various parts. Head and wielding, wielding a axe two-handed once assembled. We have this female fighter caped figure. We have this guy with a like a metal symbol and. Uh, Staff once his arms are attached, like a stitched up cloak, and some sort of animal on his back. And this guy, whose uh, legs are separate there, as well as his spiked mallet, and just a fist. We can like completely like slot down over those legs. So we have this lady with her antlers, and they come up with that idea. And a uh, little staff, with a lantern on it, a hand there. We have hmm, 
Okay, so here's the helmet. So the helmeted Hmm. Okay, and this is the whole upper torso. Okay, now I get it. So this entire thing goes on here as like the upper part of the body. This is just the legs. Sort of armed, armored adventurer. Ooh, another one with interesting assembly. So this is the body and cape, but see here where the legs go. The cape flows up onto this little base here. The head. Legs there, and like a sword arm. I'm coming on to some kobolds. So I don't remember if these are ones that I already have. I know some kobolds are duplicates, and some kobolds in this set are new. But kobolds. Another of that one. We got two of this set. Two of this pair as well. Oh, and a couple more here. It's a fat cobalt. Some elven rangers. find use for those. Wonderful little archetype. Great archers. Here's one with some assembly required. He's uh, got a base and a quiver that goes on his back. This one has lost his head. It's in the same bag, so probably still an elven champion. Of course, a lot of these can work well for player hero minis. Want to make armies that go together thematically? Another one of those quote ones with a separate base. This guy's cute little walking stump with fungus growing on its back. Nice and familiar to one of the elves, I suppose. Probably to her. Because she has like a basket with fungus and stuff in it. Also a little mage light, she could have a familiar. Oh, we're going on to these little Kid heroes. Kids, each with pets. This guy's got a toucan on his shoulder. And they're a bit chibi. A bit larger heads. But whatever. Kid heroes. I don't have a lot of options for those, so if ever I need it, I guess these will do. Not that I know if I'll ever need it. Some of their pets are uh, on separate bases. That, like that was like I mean that's just like a little small dog or wolf. That'll be useful. Ooh, this one got a couple of crossbows. Rogue kid. Oh, this here. <laughs> Some kid has a dragon. Head, space. <laughs> no lantern. Whatever that is.
this kid. Got a billowing cloak on this one, and like a scroll. Like this is a wizard, wizard kid. An owl, familiar. And the design on that base. Little bear. She looks grumpy. And a ram. We got some little rock people. Boulders. <laughs> so what you come in multiple little pieces. I suppose there's just more of these old rockmen. We will, we will rock you. Looks happy. And think about rock people like this is they are at least simple to paint sort of base color of whatever rock you want maybe a splash of accent and then dry brush maybe a wash if you want <laughs> they're just all rock so it's all the same color we got shambling undead zombies the face. <laughs> She's all pre-assembled. Nice and simple. Ugh. Gross. Ugh. Tongue hanging out there. Kind of dragging itself about. <laughs> We got like an archery target. This is an armor stand. Okay, so you got a wooden stand there. Like a shield here. It has like an angle so it'll kind of go on the side. Like another shield you can lean against the other side. And a bunch of you know, a glaive, a couple of swords, a mace, a spear, an axe. They can all kind of fit on the different racks of that. You have just a suit of armor on a little plinth. Which of course, suit of armor always feels like could be animated. <laughs> Thanks to Scooby-Doo. And another with chain on a little stand. Okay, here I think this is a manticore. It's got wings there. It's got its extra legs there and a sort of tail. Kind of a rocky base. So uh, there's some sort of manticore beast. <laughs> and we have, well, this pumpkin patch from which this vine leads up to this not a beholder pumpkin which has all these sort of vines with other jack-o-lanterns come out the side so sort of a jack-o-lantern almost beholder like creature we got some uh, wolves. Have a bit of undead appearance. Some bones sticking out. Uh, Zombie-ish. They're like dire wolves too. They're giant. They're you know, more than a single space. So, and this one 
as a base that is actually two by two. And it's uh, multiple pieces because it goes together. You actually have a whole inside the rib cage kind of look. But it's really deteriorating. And other undead themed stuff. We got base cloak here onto which there we go this cloaked skeletal figure with billowing cloak and uh, scythe so like a the avatar of death which is also what this fellow could be you know skeletal scythe Hourglass. Another avatar of death. Skeletal warrior figure. And zombified king, maybe? That's some sort of crown. Ones and a few pieces. Another skeletal helmet armored figure. Oh. This big one. The base there. Big club vulture. Another vulture on its head. This is like an undead. Oh, another vulture for that arm. So it's got like vultures eating at it. The undead giant. Like the more normal sized undead. Skeletal warrior. And one more. Okay, ignore this thing out the side as I hold this together. This, <laughs> this is his hand that goes over there. This is his other hand that has the scythe. This is like a construct scarecrow thing. It's in many pieces. <laughs> and here is another construct scarecrow. It has its arms outstretched on a board. It's a separate piece. And this is a misshapen clay golem. Arms separate. Could be clay face. And I guess this giant armored figure is like an iron golem, just because of the set it's in. Giant body there. Big metal shield, giant metal sword, uh, bit of a mechanical face there. This one feels like not quite a warforged. So, face. See the face it has there is kind of mechanical. So, you're not warforged. Got our big old stone golem. I feel like they made a stone golem very similar to this, but smaller in the past. So this is a little more imposing. And a, uh, a glass, like a stained glass golem for our, what was that, young Sherlock Holmes fans out there? <laughs> if you paint it with transparent um, inks, I guess, so that it still remains some transparency on the glass. Which I've never done. I guess I'll have to figure that out. <laughs> and for more reasons than one, I'll need to figure out that transparent painting. This 
crystalline dragon with these wings perches on this so a bunch of these are all different pieces but uh, yeah so you get like a, a gem dragon of whatever color gem you paint it this treasure golem strikes me as odd being transparent I guess the giant gem in the center of it makes sense but it's on a pile of treasure silver and gold coins it is made almost entirely of silver and gold coins. Uh, it's got a an arm there. There's something sticking out. So that's an awesome mini. I will barely get used to the fact that it's transparent, but I guess kind of cool in the little area where it is used. We got some spell effects like this is um, Tensor's floating disc, or you know whatever they call it and we have big bees hand which are awesome and they take up a like their scale is great interpose with this one this one could grab and those are great detail on that then you got the fist which is in parts a little ghost Wisp will attach the fist to the base. We have a unseen servant, which always useful to have those. I mean, you need a lot of those if ever, you know, you get a battle in a uh, what is that? Magnificent mansion? <laughs> Some sort of magic flying weapon. And then you get these. This is a puff of smoke, a little bit of fire, and a blast of ice, all of which are just designed to be like glued onto a hand of a mini to add a spell effect. Very cool. We also get this base with these thorny vines to make a like a thorny viney tangled wall. Just a insertable stone wall which is two inches wide all right so now we got this figure this um they did the kickstarter around halloween i'm pretty sure they have a lot of jack-o-lanterns <laughs> this is like a jack-o-lantern knight a shield and this lady with her bird lovely dress a little sickle I think she's a witch she's got a broom either that or a cleaning lady I don't know okay this figure sort of sits right there on this base so he's almost like he's or he's like he's flying like his cape is touching the ground um, it's got a armored head and extra hand that attach. So yeah, some sort of magic guy there. Oh, and we got goblins. We've had goblins before. These are fancy goblins in a bunch of pieces. Like a warrior. Oh, this guy got two swords. This goblin looks like probably tiptoeing. Got a dagger. One hand out. This one has a shield and a mace. And a weird hairdo. This one has a big staff and a long beard. So these are some great goblins if you end up a spell effect in the hand. Great goblins for like player characters. And sometimes during the Kickstarter, the community gets minis made that probably wouldn't otherwise have been made. For example, this one has a um, accordion attached to a pan flute 
with a cymbal set on one end of this drum on his back. Because he is a bard goblin that is a one-man band. Yet, I might find a use for him at some point. <laughs> we have our riders in black. And our horses. A little pudding base. These armored and cloaked figures. Not in all ring rights. Of course not. So, I'm going to actually show you what he looks like on this horse. is rearing up. You know, ring rates are cool. Of course, these are not. These are legally distinct from ring rights. Oh no, he fell to pieces. We got this noble fellow, overweight, with a staff. Very fancy attire. This one looks like maybe. Half orc, I guess. Some sort. Yeah, we're sort of elven maybe here. Another elf woman by the ears. Oh, here is a large uh, noble woman, very fancy with a pipe, big hair, not at all struggling to find food. Sort of a mercenary looking character here. Got a dungeon delver. Uh, the swords, if you just put them in there, hot water. Like, I have a video where I like, put it in like just under boiling water or whatever, you don't need to do that. You can just run the hot tap and usually that'll work. If it doesn't, then yeah, you can boil water, but try hot tap first, I've learned. This ranger fellow here, bow and a scimitar. Traveler, the staff. I mean, these could be great PC or NPC minis. This witch here. Skeleton under her cloak. Some sort of tentacles or tendrils coming out from under it. Okay. This lady is uh, got like a fairy dragon or something at the end of her arm. So she's releasing. Clothing that speaks of cultures other than just traditional D&D &D style. Got a cloaked figure, a bow. Oh, here's one in pieces. Let's see. Got a sword out and ready to go. He goes on those legs. Base. Fancy looking shield. And a very spiky, pointy dagger. Got this guy with um, fists that got metal spikes on him. Let's see his face there. I think he's maybe a dwarf? I don't know. Not sure if he's short enough, but got the beard for it. Oh, some sort of author. Writing a book there. Very fancy. So this lady has the back of a book in there. She's reading a book.
sort of has a hand up, maybe doing some sort of spell. This guy is very uh, heavily armored, big cloak, helmet with horns, giant sword, lots of pieces. We have a few dragons in the core set this time. So they're in many pieces. We got whatever wings. This thing it, um, slots into a base by just the tail, so it looks like it's flying and the tail's all that's touching the ground. We got head that's uh, and arms, so it's a smaller dragon, you know, fitting within a large space. Another. This one, uh, this head's already together. It's got very frilly mitts there. Uh, wings of a different shape and quite a different texture. Long legs that sort of stand on the ground. Arms. Again, follow my Instagram. Eventually, it'll be painted and put on there. We got this dragon wolf, which is um, bigger than I imagined, but I guess more scale for small dragon. It's just a wolf head. Um, veiny texture in the wings. Very cool. That'll be fun to to just catch when painting. Base. Some of these are actually a lot more fun to look at now that I'm doing more painting. There's a little bitty. I guess it's still a bit larger than a one inch base, but it's definitely smaller. And I'm not an expert painter by any stretch of the imagination, but I have fun with it and I get them. Well, they're serviceable for the table. Got these blight sort of wood creatures here. Leaning forward a bit. <laughs> Remember when I said some things only get made because of discussions in the Kickstarter comments? Well, this, my friends, is a dire cabbage. Suggested actual use, cabbage mimic. Some sort of mammal. Oh. It's majestic. <laughs> well, once it's assembled, I suppose. Got the antlers. Looks a little sad, but they called stag. We have this. Uh, it just fits in a two, a two by two. Um, big old club. Giant body and oh, what is that? Three spots for heads? Yep, it's a three headed Etten. Kickstarter comments tried to get those to be the heads of some of the people that work at Reaper, but no, they just made them monstrous, cool looking heads instead. And spiked ball. Little decorative bit. Keg on its back. Get this, um,. I believe this is a troll. Face. Yeah, that's a troll face. We got a female snake person. Which matches some other minis we had from a previous Bones Kickstarter. Which fortunately I haven't painted yet, so I can just add her to the stack of those and paint them all together because it's definitely easier to paint a big batch of light figures all together. And this... Well, it's... Hmm. Oh, it's... It's an ugly fella. No offense. Some sort of seems a bit druidic or something. Natural looking staff. 
We got another armored fellow. Uh, shield. There's a face. Several weapons. <laughs> mm. Another troll. This one has a um, pot on his head. As a hat. So makeshift armor. Sword knife. Has a turtle shell. As a shield. And we have a third. Uh, another troll here. Double-handed cleaver. Hmm, this little guy. He's, um, a little large imp, small demon, whatever fellow. The number of legs on this fellow makes me feel probably a basilisk. Uh, okay. See the head. Oh, over there. This one has um, bat-like wings and such, and it um, weird alien face and a base that works like a stalagmite to have them flying. I don't remember what this thing was called. Um, it's got a weird body and a tail wraps around and this bumpy ball goes on the end of the tail. It's got a weird face. And I think whatever they, it was called, there's one in one of the magic setting books. But it looks totally different. But, yeah. Weird monstrosity thing. And this one, which I think they called Krampus, you got hoofed feet and a tail. Uh, the backpack has like a foot sticking out of it. So there's someone in there. Got a club that he's holding. And there's that face. Horns. Oh, there's even like a child's face. You can just see there. So that's uh, Krampus. This is an exciting one. So on this base goes this slug thing and uh, it's got the tendrils below its mouth and it's got these slicers there in a previous set was a giant worm thing that I painted up real cool and um, and there were like baby little worms that came out of it that did not have like the matching blades like the the adult did so this is like slightly bigger adolescent <laughs> just helping with the age cycle of that creature um, you know which just helps with making the whole encounter out of it and we have our final piece for this set which is this watcher in the well or whatever they called it which has five of these tendrils and say stick in here and have spiky sucker bits so all the way around, there's spots for each of the five tentacle arms. And this weird brain thing, which, I mean, this could be um, an elder brain. Uh, also, I like this here. This splashy base that everything fits into is separate. So you could manage to paint this up looking like just a, you know, a dark pit below. So have you you have that in there and then yeah, there's little notches in here that force it into spot that you can see, but for the most part just paint it black and like there's stone on there and then you could set the thing in there. So watch her in the well. So that is, you know, all that's included in this core set for Bones 5. Um, yeah, it's cool. And a lot of them are small. 
And I, I definitely have more fun painting the bigger figures, and I bought a good number of bigger figures. See the videos in the coming days. Um, but, you know, I always want to start with just the core set, the basic offering. Uh, I think they, they increased the price by a little bit this time around. Instead of 100 was it 120 maybe? Um, but they just knew going in that there was just going to be more. Um, and they lived up to it. So, um, like the video, comment what your favorite figure was, and uh, make sure to you're subscribed so you can see the upcoming Bones 5 unboxing videos. Thank you for watching. Bye.